About noon, Dr. King and Dr. Abernathy ordered lunch. They ordered catfish, salad, and two iced teas. Now, there were supposed to be two different orders, but the waitress made it a double order. Dr. Abernathy was going to say something to her about it, but Dr. King said, Ralph, don't worry about it. We can eat off the same plate. That would be the last meal that they would have together. Doc's brother AD was there and they spent time together. They spoke to Mother King for about an hour and she was excited that the two brothers were together. Now they were having discussions about the upcoming march which was scheduled for Friday the 5th. The march that Doc led on March 28th had gone violent. Some of the youth in the crowd started breaking windows. Some of the youth were from an organization called the Invaders. Some of Doc's staff members were afraid that the youth were gonna to try to do that again. And Doc said that he would rather be dead than to be afraid about that. Well, certainly those words proved to be prophetic. Now, Andrew Young was in court working on an illegal injunction and he had not communicated with the rest of the staff all day. And they figured that the longer there was no communication, the worse the news was going to be. He finally showed up at the motel and Dr. King, who could be playful in private, said to him, look man, you gotta call me. I'm your leader. You gotta call me and let me know what's happening, man. Dr. King threw a pillow at him and then Andrew Young threw the pillow back and all of a sudden grown men started pillow fighting each other and then they stopped and then they said well you know it's time to get ready for dinner so they went upstairs to get ready for dinner they were supposed to be having dinner over Billy Kyle's house now Doc was laying there in the bed trying to figure out what Mrs. Kyle's was going to have on the menu I mean, he was laying there talking about it and talking about it. And then he finally said, bro, why don't you call Miss Kyle's and find out what she's cooking? <laughs> Dr. Abner was like, are you for real? Doc was like, yeah. <laughs> so Dr. Abernathy called. Uh, Miss Kyle said they were having roast beef, asparagus, cauliflower, sweet potatoes, chitlins, and pig's feet. Doc said he couldn't wait to get there. So he got up and started shaving. He used magic shave because he had sensitive skin and he didn't want to use a razor. After he finished shaving, he put on cologne and he went out onto the balcony. Dr. Abernathy said he was still inside getting himself ready and he could hear some of the conversations going on outside. It was a conversation between Doc and Jesse Jackson. It was something like, you know, Jesse, you ain't dressed for dinner. Where's your tie? You know, Jesse Jackson was like, Doc, you don't need a tie for dinner. The only thing you need is an appetite. Andrew Young talked about, um, he was actually down in the parking lot looking up at the balcony. He says, you know, Doc, if you haven't been feeling too well, uh, you might want to get a coat. Doc said, yeah, you might be right. Doc said to Ben Branch, who was scheduled to perform that night an event Doc was going to attend. He said, Ben, make sure you play Take My Hand, Precious Lord, in the meeting tonight. Play it real pretty. Dr. Abernathy said he was putting on cologne. I believe he said it was Aramis. He said he had just finished rubbing his hands together and he was about to bring it up to his face when he heard what sounded to be a car backfire. And he said he instinctively jumped. And then he looked out from the room. He looked out and didn't see Doc, but saw Doc's feet under the railing. Billy Kyles was standing next to Doc um, listening to these conversations and then he turned and started walking away he took a couple of steps he said and he heard a bang and a uh. Dr. Abernathy went out he he cradled Doc he saw what happened he, he went down he cradled Doc uh, he started patting his cheeks um, he says that uh, it looked like Doc was trying to say something at one point it looked like his eyes were trying to focus uh, and he said, Martin, this is Ralph. Martin, this is Ralph. 
everything is going to be all right. And then he said, the life just left his eyes. Billy Kyle said, as he stood there, he saw the color leave Doc's face. Doc was struck with a 30 yard six. That is a military grade rifle. Doc was talking down um, and the bullet had, had, had entered like right around his mouth into his cheek and it severed his spinal column. And Dr. Abernathy said he saw the entry hole. He says, but uh, near the neck, he said there was a hole big enough to, to put his fist in. They took Doc to St. Joseph's Hospital where he was officially pronounced dead just after 7 p.m. But for all practical purposes, you know, that gunshot was, was fatal. You know, Doc fell to the ground and died. Fell to the ground and died. And yet somewhere I read, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it falls to the ground and dies, it will bring forth fruit. Uh, I think we can say that Doc's life uh, and his sacrifice uh, has brought fruit and we benefit from his life and his sacrifice. Robert F. Kennedy was running for president and later that evening he was about to present a speech in Indiana to an audience that had no idea what had just transpired. He announced to them that Doc had been shot and killed in Memphis. Two months later, Robert F. Kennedy would be assassinated too.